Hello and welcome to Brick Part, the home of Land Rover parts. I'm here in Shropshire at their workshop and I'm here with Paul Myers, MD. Paul, I know that you work here, but of course you've got your own Land Rovers and you work on your own Land Rovers as well. What's the biggest and most interesting job you've done on one? I actually built a, a 1970 88 inch uh, Land Rover really from uh, completely from parts. Uh, so from brand new parts. Wow. Wow. And what was the most difficult part of that process? Probably the most difficult part was um, cataloguing all the parts, which is crazy because that's what we do. But there's so many parts on a, 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 a series Land Rover. Um, it takes an awful lot of time to find them all. Excellent. Well, from the glories of building your own Land Rover to the basics, this is what we've got here. UJs and prop shafts. Um, so firstly, let's talk about the prop shaft itself. How would you, this is obviously pretty old and pretty worn. How would you tell if it's worn? Okay, the, the normal um, um, symptoms are that as you're taking up drive to the car, um, to the axle, you'll get a loud clunk from the, mm. um, the, the prop shaft. It will then, as this one is quite worn and this shaft, uh, become unbalanced and you'll start to feel vibration through the, the, uh, the seat of the, 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 uh, the car. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it can actually just feel like the car's got a misfire at speed, but it, it is actually a, a worn UJ. Really? That's interesting because once you've got it off, it, it all, all its ills become apparent. I'm moving this around here, I can definitely feel the clunk and turning it out the other way on the other end. I mean, that, that's almost ready to come off, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, failure. so how do we remedy this, Paul? Okay, um, universal joints are readily available for this uh, and all the Land Rover prop shafts which um, we have in stock. Um, it's a simple kit to install um, and completely uh, rectifies the problem. Okay, uh, you supply these with nipples as well, which I prefer. Sure. That means you can grease them yourselves. You don't, I'm not so keen on the sealed ones, so that's yep. a good thing to have. Yes, re regular, regular greasing of the UJs and the slider as well on the prop shaft is essential sure, sure. Uh, to, keep them, uh, to keep them going. And always use new nuts and bolts. We always use new nuts and bolts. The uh, nylocks uh, don't like being used twice, really. Uh, so it's always a good idea to use them. And we always, always use this um, prop shaft bolt as well. Prop shaft bolt, spanner, socket, yeah. uh, which makes the installation That's an awful lot easier. That's a good thing. I mean, I, the number of times I've struggled replacing UJs using a spanner, turning it a flat at a time, and I should have just got one of these. Sure. Fantastic. Well, look. Um, Steve's going to do the work on this and he's asked me to go and clean it up first because obviously you can't really do it properly until you've cleaned it up. You'll never get those circlips out for a start. So uh, I'm going to head off, clean this up and uh, meet Steve by the desk. So I'll, I'll see you in just a second. Okay, hello Steve. Hi, yeah. Now, I've given this a really good clean because you've got to give it a clean, haven't you? You're going to work on it. Yes, we have, yep. What's the first thing you're going to do, Steve? Well, the first thing I'm going to do for starters yeah. is I'm going to mark two parts that we're taking apart to keep them in time because if we put them back together the wrong way around, we'll get a vibration on the vehicle. Okay, so all the oaks have got to go back in the same way they went out. Yes, they have. So, first of all, we're literally going to take a pen and mark two different parts where it's together. Good tip. Next of all, just for ease, we're going to remove this Move the grease nipple out of the front, okay. just to give us more clearance. Is it worth treating stuff like that with penetrating or just before you ever go? It shouldn't have to, in no. it should come out. As okay. Not all the time as they're totally dry, there still can be a little bit of grease in a failed UJ. Yeah. All right, once we've done that, then it's time to start removing the circlips. Okay. But the circlips are going to be quite tight in place, so what we're going to do is shock them for starters to be able to release them. That's just a normal socket that fits inside. That's just a yeah. normal socket, normal yeah. hat, fits inside the circlip onto the bearing cap. Yep. Yeah. We're just going to tap it to release. What are you using there to take the circlip out? These are a pair of internal circlip pliers. We're just using them to remove the circlips as so. And that's the fail. Do you want, don't need reuse this or not? The kit comes with a new set of circlips, so always use a new set of circlips. Oh. Right. Same again on the opposite side. Like so. Right. If you excuse me, we'll yep. put this on the vise and we'll start to dismantle. So, you've just done 
two sets of opposing circlips and now you're hammering through on the yoke to get them to come out one side, to get the cap to pop out one side? Yes, I am, yeah. Okay, fine. And we'll do that both sides to make it easier before we carry on. Also, the jaws of the vise are far enough apart to make sure that you can hammer it through while these, this yoke rests on the vise. Yes, yeah, so you're using the vise just to hold the fixed side of the yoke so you can remove the caps out the other half. Gotcha. All right. And then what you might have to do on some occasions is pinch it in the vise to remove the cap the rest of the way. Brilliant. Like so. That's out. So here's some evidence as to why it might have failed. Part of the bearing cap has gone there and there are the needle bearings inside. It's not very pretty. Um, and so we now repeat for the other side of that yoke. Yes, yeah, we repeat the same process again, tap in the caps, remove the circlips and then tap out to remove the UJ. Great. Okay, so here's the old UJ body. You can see there's, you can see the wear, can't you, on the actual face of the inner runs, on, uh, particularly on, on that side there. It's pitted. Yeah, you can see the moisture's got into yeah, it, a bit, yeah. of grit, a bit of grime. It just takes one bit of grit, doesn't it, to sort of set it off. That's all it is, yeah. yeah. Great, what do you do now then, now that you've got it out? Well, I'm just cleaning around where I've knocked the caps out of, just to make sure I haven't damaged while dismantling. Uh -huh. If there's any little burrs or anything, they've got to be cleaned up prior to reassemble. You don't have to be do this job again next year, do you? You just want it to be done? Well, as long as you maintain them and grease them regularly, you shouldn't have to. So yeah. if you go off road playing for a day, when you come back, clean, clean and grease them. Yeah. Expel the water that you've put in while you've been off roading. Yeah. So. So you're just testing in there for burrs? Testing Anything in there for burrs. Anything you might burrs. have damaged while you're taking it apart? It's just when, when the cross joint bottoms out on the end of the cap, you can see there. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just got caught, so we'll just have to dress that out with the file before we can reassemble. You've got a very fine file there, very gentle. You're just very fine, damage. gentle file. Just carefully look what you're doing, just to remove that edge, not file the hole on the inside. Just literally, just remove what you've marked. Okay. Brilliant. Right, okay, so now we've got rid of this UJ, we're gonna go over and see Fuzz. He's gonna give us a few tips about making sure you've got the right prop shaft for the right job. If you're considering changing the suspension setup of your Land Rover so that you have more suspension travel, that means upwards and downwards movement, you're going to need to do something about the prop shaft. Imagine that this is a front axle. I know it's not one, but imagine that it is. When you're traveling along in your vehicle, it's moving up and down and rotating on its own axis from the center, like so, with the springs at either end moving up and down. Now, if you decide to lengthen the travel of those springs, then you have more axle movement up and down, which means that you need a greater amount of travel from your prop shaft but your standard prop shaft only has so much travel. It can only move up and down so much, which is why when you're upgrading your suspension, you need to install a wide angle prop shaft to give you a far greater angle of movement. I can show you the two together. That's that one at its limit. That's the old one at its limit. That means an awful lot of difference. The old one will pull apart the new one 
will stay functional through wider angles and keep you going through thick and thin. Okay, so we've seen how to get rid of the old UJ. Now, we've got to put the new one in. Steve, what do you start with? Well, first of all, with a new joint, we're going to remove the grease nipple so we don't damage it on the installation. Yeah. Then we're going to remove two of the caps. Okay. You just pull them straight off like that, yeah? Yeah, just retaining the seal, just take them off. Let's have a quick look. So, the grease is making sure that all the needles are stuck to the side, they won't fall in. Take them off nice and square, I'd imagine. Yeah. Right. First of all, we're going to take the first cap. Yep. Sit them into the cup. So that's putting it in the vise to squeeze it in, yeah? Sorry. I'm putting them in the vise to locate him in. So I saw you were using the vise to position it properly. Yeah, you've got to make you sure you push it in squarely so you don't damage yeah, yeah. the mating surfaces. And you were feeling the, feeling the pressure that you needed on each, each edge of it to make sure it was, it was nice and true. Yes, yeah, yeah. you've got to make sure it goes in parallel with that so no damage occurs. Okay. Next of all, we feed in the next joint. So he's in there and then we proceed to push him through more so we can fit the circlip. You need a third pair of hands, really, don't you? There we go. Yep. So you're just pushing this in far enough so that the circlip will drop into the groove. Yep. Okay. Brilliant. Right. Okay, think... which side... Is there any way around you need to put these, or...? Yes, there is, yes. Okay. Um, the circlip has, like, a rounded edge to one side, and it has a machined flat edge to the other. Oh, I didn't realise that. So... Yeah, I can see now. So you've got, that's the machined edge and that's the edge that gets pushed through. Yeah, the machined edge needs to be facing outwards so it grips into the groove so okay. it stops it coming out in operation. Brilliant, okay. Well, I've never realised that before, so that's a tip for me. That's gone in nice and easy. Yeah. Then we need to fit the next cap. So you've just pulled the body of the UJ out slightly from the cap on this yeah, side? Yeah, just pull the main UJ out slightly to okay. allow for the alignment, because when you insert this one, you need to try and align it on the outer race and also the inner bearing right, face. Right, OK, so this is quite difficult. You've got to start the two roughly at the same time if you can. And you just feel that little bit of give yeah, as it, as it as pops it in. Pops in the both, and just yep. check, check that the seals move in and out freely. If that doesn't move, it's tightly. Then there's a roller in the wrong place, and yeah. you need to dismantle it again. And if you do need to dismantle it, you check inside the, for, for, for the roller that's wrong and manoeuvre it back into position. Well, usually they flip out and go flat in the bottom. Do they? Right. So it won't assemble any further. If you try and force it with the vise, you'll break the bearing. So good time to have a pair of long nose pliers then. Yep. Yeah. There you go, I'll look here. That's gone in perfectly. Brilliant. Thank you. Now with this side, you insert the cap on the outer yoke, and then what happens next? We just push that one in by hand, as yeah. far as I'll go for starters, and then we thread it onto the other half, making sure that our marks are tied up again. Okay. So, like so, and then again. Right. 
Yeah. OK, so, got it all in. What's the final operation here? We're just going to tap each cap now in turn with a copper hammer just to shock the caps out into the ends of the UJ, just to allow it to be free again. OK. So... Should all be free. You can feel it all. And then the last thing to do is to put the nipple back in. Yeah, just refit the grease nipple. And then put some grease on it before you fit it back to the vehicle. And standard grease? Just standard, yeah. General purpose grease. Brilliant. So having fitted the opposing sides of this UJ, we're going to now repeat the process on the other two. Uh, if you want to go back and have a look at any of the other Britpart videos, just go to the menu and search for them. Um, we'll finish up here. See you next time.